Hey, what's with the long face? Oh, hey, it's nothing, just a bad day. You know, you can tell me everything, right? I'm your best friend, so I know when something is up with you. Spit it out. Okay, you're right, as always. (laughs) I think you should hang on to something, because this is shocking news. I- Oh? My god. Who is that? He looks so gorgeous. Sue, are you even listening? Huh? What did you just say? I turned to him, but he mumbled out typical, then walked away. Jeez, what's his problem? Oh, that was Lucas earlier. My best friend since kindergarten. Don't mind him, he's always like this. But whatever, let's get back to this handsome guy. So it turns out his name is Alex, and he's new here. I knew it, because such a pretty boy like him would never go unnoticed by me. The next morning, I couldn't wait to walk to school with Lucas. I had some amazing news to tell him. It happened to me the night before, during my shift at the diner. Lucas, you won't believe who was in the diner yesterday. Robert Downey Jr.? What? No, it was Alex, the new student. Gosh, Lucas, you've got to help me get his attention. You're on the baseball team together, right? Huh? Do you like that guy? Seriously? Duh. I mean, look at him. He's like Timothy Chalamet's twin brother. So will you help me, please? Ugh, fine. Hmm. I did hear him say he likes girls on roller skates. I have an idea. The next time he comes to the diner, serve him on skates. It's a sure way to impress him. Oh, yes, that's a great idea. I hugged Lucas to thank him. So the next time Alex came into the diner, I took out my roller skates and was ready to serve him his spaghetti. I'm kind of a novice on skates, so I slowly slid over to him. So far, so good, until I didn't see that somebody had spilled their milkshake all over the floor. And yes, of course, I slipped. Oh no! I quickly covered my head to avoid the spaghetti plate, but... Huh? The plate had fallen on the floor, but where was the spaghetti? I looked around. Oh, snap! I found it! It landed on Alex's head! It was so humiliating, but worse still, as hard as I tried, I couldn't get back on my feet. Ugh, stupid skates. I repeatedly apologized to him. At first, Alex looked totally shocked. Then, perhaps because of my pathetic look, he couldn't hold it in anymore and burst out laughing. (laughs) Well, at least you dare to slide on them. I, on the other hand, am not a big fan of those. (laughs) What? What did he mean by that? Ugh, Lucas! The next day, I went looking for Lucas to confront him. He was easy to find, as he was in his favorite place to browse in town, the sneaker store. Why did you tell me Alex likes roller skates? Because he definitely doesn't. (laughs) Maybe I misheard him. Oh, wait, he likes girls in superhero costumes. That's right. What? That sounds ridiculous. Forget it, I'm not listening to you anymore. Go give your advice to some other poor girl, not me. What's up with Lucas? Why would he give me such bad advice? It's like he wanted me to fail. But why? Oh my goodness. Was he, maybe, into me? Nah, nonsense. Still, I had a feeling about it. So I decided to avoid Lucas as much as possible. I came up with loads of excuses not to hang out with him, such as mom was driving me to school and I was skipping lunch because I was on a diet. Ugh, it was so exhausting. I mean, have you ever tried sneakily eating your lunch in class so you don't pass out from hunger? However, this was necessary, as we both needed some space. It's the only way to keep our friendship safe. But then one day, Lucas messaged me. Can we talk after school? I have something important to tell you. Oh no. Was he going to confess his feelings? But if he did it, our friendship would be ruined. I couldn't let that happen, so I didn't meet him. Instead, I ran straight home. He called me a bunch of times, but I ignored them all. I ghosted him, to be exact. Jeez, I wasn't proud, but I had to save our friendship from stupid Cupid. But then the next time I saw him, he only gave me a hurt look, then purposely walked off in the other direction. Oh, no. Now it was basically like a cold war between us. Ugh. We might not have been hanging out with each other, but I was still keeping an eye on Lucas. I'd been watching him for a couple of days, 
and it looked like he was having a tough time. He must have figured out my rejection, so now he was miserable. Oh, dear Lucas, I didn't want this to happen, but I can't risk losing our friendship. But then I noticed something. One time, the whole school went on a picnic trip. I watched Lucas from afar and noticed that he was giving dagger looks to a bunch of girls. Hmm, hang on. They were surrounding Alex. I even saw him trip another girl up who was going to join the group of girls adoring Alex. And then he made out it was an accident. Another time I overheard him telling girls from other classes who were standing by the class door trying to get a glimpse of Alex that he pretended to be all cold and quiet because he had hideous teeth. Which, of course, wasn't true, because he had a smile that could light up a room. Ah, uh, looks like it wasn't just me. Lucas didn't want any other girls going near Alex. Did he hate Alex that much? Or, or, he likes Alex? For heaven's sake! Stop thinking such nonsense, Sue! Your head was messing with you. Then one day, my mom heard that Lucas's mom was sick, so she made some chicken soup and told me to bring it over to his mom. I didn't want to go around there. I mean, what if I saw Lucas? Awkward. But who was I to deny a sick lady soup? When I arrived, I opened the door and let myself in as I usually do. And that's when I heard the conversation between Lucas and his mom. Lucas, you need to forget about Alex. I want to, but I can't, mom. He's always on my mind. <sighs> anyway, the important thing is your health. You need to eat something. Look at you, you're not getting any better. How can I eat? After your dad left us, it's like all this time I've been living in a lie. I'm so sorry. Wait a moment. My Sherlock Holmes intuition was kicking in. Now everything makes sense. Why Lucas was sad for a couple of days, why I hadn't seen his dad for a while, and why his mom was suddenly sick. It's because Lucas was gay. His father probably didn't take it so well, so he left, which was really devastating for Lucas's mom. But I'm his best friend. Why didn't he tell me? Man... He hid it really well. But not only that, he also tried to sabotage me when he knew I had a crush on Alex. Well, it turns out we weren't best friends like I thought. Ugh. But no, I couldn't just ignore this. I needed to talk to Lucas to clear things up. The next day, Lucas had baseball practice. So I went to find him at the field, but he wasn't there. I asked some of his teammates, but nobody knew where he was. Hmm, where could he have gone? And that's when I saw Lucas with Alex behind the bleachers. Well, well, well. Look at them. A lovey dovey. They talked for a bit, then each of them walked away in a different direction. I watched them from a distance with my arms folded. That traitor! I was so ready to yell in Lucas's face. And that's when our eyes met. He was startled when he saw me, like he'd just been busted. Well, it was technically the correct word to describe the situation. Sue, Su Su what are you doing here? Why do you look so flustered? Come on, I know about your relationship between you and Alex, so you don't need to hide it anymore. <laughs> How did you know about it? I heard you and your mom talking about it, but I don't understand. How could you do this to me? You knew that I liked Alex. I know, but I couldn't explain. I was so ashamed. You should have talked to me first, but instead you stole Alex from me. Best friends don't do that to each other. Hold on a minute. What did you just say? I stole Alex from you? What do you mean? Ugh, come on. Just stop with all this hiding and lying. I know you two are together. What? Why was he overreacting like this? Was what I just said not true? Well, turns out it wasn't. I was totally wrong. Just one thing was for sure. My detective intuition sucked. And that's when Lucas told me the truth. Lucas and Alex weren't in love. Lucas even hated Alex because he's Lucas's half-brother. Oh my. It's like I got lost in a telenovela or something. When my mom was pregnant with me, my dad got drunk and made a big mistake with a colleague of his. She fell pregnant with Alex, but my dad didn't know about it. Then a month ago... Alex's mom was diagnosed with a serious illness. She didn't want him to end up alone if she couldn't make it. So she showed up in dad's life again and messed everything up. Oh my god. So that's why Lucas's mom all of a sudden got so skinny and sick. And Lucas's dad didn't leave them. No, it's because his mom kicked his dad out of the house. I wanted to tell you in the canteen the other day, but you were too starry-eyed over Alex to listen. This made me mad, so I tried everything to prevent you from getting close to him. My family's broken because of him, so I don't want my best friend to fall for someone like that. Oh, it turns out I'm a really bad friend. My best friend had problems at home, and I didn't even know it. No, because I was busy daydreaming about a guy I barely knew. I apologize to Lucas. 
and promised that I would pay more attention to him. And then we hugged. On the plus side, at least none of my crazy theories were true. (laughs) So it turns out it was all just one big misunderstanding. The Cold War between us ended, and our friendship remains as amazing as ever. I also managed to convince Lucas and Alex to give each other a chance. After all, they're half-brothers, and what happened between their parents wasn't their fault. Besides, Alex's mom is seriously ill, so he needs Lucas more than ever. It's great hanging out with them both and seeing them laughing and joking about. Ah, peace at last. The three of us have become pretty great friends. Oh, do you want to hear something funny? Lucas actually offered to matchmake me with Alex. (laughs) But it's okay. I refused. Why, you ask? Well, the three of us are such awesome friends now, and I don't want anything to ruin that. Pretty mature of me, right? I used to think that being beautiful meant I'd sail through life and always get whatever I wanted. Yeah, I know, this sounds dumb, but back in high school, life was so much easier down to my good looks. All it took was a flutter of my eyelashes, and the nerds would do my homework for me. And girls invited me to their parties because they knew me going meant the cute boys would go too. It was nice having attention from other boys, but I was only interested in my boyfriend. Logan. He was a senior, and he was just perfect. He was so handsome, super smart, and a sports pro. There was one teeny tiny problem. I sucked at studying. It was just so boring. But to be honest, it didn't matter anyways, as I was beautiful. And you know, being beautiful was enough. Besides, I did have one passion. I love singing and composing music. I don't publicize them or anything, but I'm not gonna lie, they were quite catchy. We had one long summer together before Logan went off to college, so I decided to surprise him with a love song I'd written for him. I showed up at his house with my guitar, ready to play it to him, but before I could start it, he said, Illy, I want to break up. What? Why? I spluttered out. I've met someone else. She isn't as beautiful as you, but she's smarter. We're going to study at Stanford together. Let's face it, a place like that's way out of your reach. I couldn't believe what i just heard. I grabbed his arm and begged him to give our love another chance, but he just walked away. During the next few days, I kept calling and texting him, but he ghosted me completely. Feeling desperate, I searched for his girlfriend's info on social media and found out her name was Jo Lee, and she was one of the top students of another high school in the city. And OMG, how could he fall in love with such an ugly girl? Oh, turns out Logan wanted a smart girl, huh? So if I got into this college, then he would take me back, right? I mean, surely he'd pick a smart and beautiful girl over a smart, ugly one. That settled it. I was going to work my butt off for my senior year to get into Stanford. Geez, studying was way harder than I anticipated. It didn't help that I had loads of catching up to do. And why did Logan have to study economics? All the numbers and graphs made me feel super dizzy. I didn't know where to start. Everything was new to me. So I had to ask a couple of my nerdy admirers to help me out. At first, they actually laughed at me as they thought I was kidding. But when they realized I was being deadly serious, they handed me some books and tried explaining stuff to me. I even spent my break times in the library. Ugh, why was it like a maze in there? I swear I got lost and couldn't find my way out for at least an hour. One time, I even fell asleep in the library, and some dude thought it was funny to take a picture. And for days after that, Everyone at school passed around the photo of me drooling on a pile of books. Ew! But despite those hardships, I couldn't give up. I even stuck a photo of Logan to my wall to remind me of my goal. I stopped hanging out with my friends and didn't go to any more parties. And I even missed prom to study. Needless to say, my friends really thought that I was insane or something. Even my mom was so worried that she wanted to take me to the hospital to be checked over. OMG, how ridiculous. Stop overreacting, people. Have you never seen a hardworking, beautiful girl before? And then something crazy happened. 
I received my letter from Stanford, and OMG, guess what? I got in. I couldn't believe it, and neither did my family and friends. Everyone was so surprised and happy for me. To be honest, giving up on music was a pity, but studying music wouldn't help me get Logan back, and this would. I was going to be at the same college as him, studying the same course, albeit a year behind. What could possibly go wrong? So, I moved to college and ended up with the geekiest roommate ever. She actually plastered math equations onto the walls. Ugh, what a weird girl. Moreover, studying here was even more boring than in high school. Much more. One time, during a macroeconomics class, yep, it's as boring as it sounds, I had my earbuds in and was thinking up song lyrics when someone knocked on my desk. How dare they interrupt my creative flow? So I blurted out, One second, I'm writing! While my eyes were still on my notebook. Then, I looked up to see Professor Bentley standing there. He snatched my notebook, saw my lyrics, then told me, Get out at once and never come back! Whatever, I was sick of this snooze-inducing subject anyway. Seriously, watching paint dry would have been more fun. I stormed out of there, ranting to myself about how I hated his lame class. When I turned a corner and saw Logan, holding hands with his ugly girlfriend. Ugh! Why now? Logan stared at me like he'd seen a ghost, then asked, Haley, what are you doing here? I forced a smile at him, but before I could say anything, his girlfriend spoke out. Oh, you're Ailey, my boyfriend's infamous stalker? Let me guess, Professor Bentley kicked you out? Figures, as he's allergic to brainless girls. Then she dragged Logan away. How dare she mock me? I was far too beautiful to be spoken to like that by the likes of her. I was going to show her. I'd soon win back my man. I went back to my room and listed some ideas. I could buy him a gift. Nah, too obvious. Or I could tag him in pictures of us together. Nah, too desperate. Um, I know, I should stick to what I'm good at. In my case, that's music. Besides, how romantic would me singing a love song to him be? He wouldn't be able to resist. Some days later, I took my guitar out into the yard. The crowd began to gather around me. So I said, I wrote this song for my ex, Logan. Just wanted to say that I love you so much. Will you be my boyfriend again? Everyone around me cheered, and it made me even more excited, and I started singing. After I finished my song, Logan and Jolie appeared. He looked awkward, and she looked so mad, I thought steam might come out of her ears. Whatever. I didn't care about her. I shimmied over to them, then touched his shoulder. Honey, I worked so hard to get into the same college as you. Now, will you come back to me? Then, to my surprise, he angrily said, Illy, please stop. We're over. You're crazy. All of this is crazy. Now, please, leave me alone. I stood there gobsmacked as he took Jolie's hand and they walked off. I could hear the crowd whispering about me. I felt like my world was falling down. I was moping on my bed, daydreaming about happier days with Logan, when my roommate threw her phone onto my bed and said, You might want to see this. I looked at it. What? It was me. Someone had filmed my failed serenade attempt, and now I'd gone viral. But the majority of the comments were super supportive, saying I had an awesome voice. After that, everyone in college knew my name. Okay, so all the attention felt good. Due to popular demand, I ended up releasing my song. Even the student council of the college invited me to join a performance at the school celebration. My college life just got better, as I was doing what I loved, and I made new friends. But I felt far from ecstatic, as I hated my course, and I still hadn't won Logan back. One evening, while I was stretching on the couch and thinking about Logan, a text arrived. It was from a strange number. They told me to hurry over to the dorm yard as there was something wrong with Logan. There was a huge crowd gathered there. Oh no, this must be serious. Frantically, I pushed through them, and that's when I saw Logan standing there with his back to me, in the middle of a candle heart shape. He must have sent me the message. I shakily walked toward him, 
and then softly called his name. He turned around, got on one knee, but his face was still fixed on the ground. Then, to my surprise, he said, I really love you and want to be a part of your life. Will you marry me, Jolie? Oh. Wait, what? Jolie? I shouted. He looked up at me and loudly said, Ailey, what are you doing here? Huh? What was going on? I looked back, and that's when I saw that some of their friends were standing behind me with some affectionate photos of Jolie and Logan, and also banners saying, Will you marry me, Jolie? Okay, so this clearly wasn't for me. Suddenly, Jolie appeared, and in a mocking voice said, First, you stalk my boyfriend, and now you ruin our proposal? Get real! He doesn't want you! Before I could say anything, Logan yelled at me. Oh, Ailey, please stop it! I'm begging you! Stop being so obsessed! It makes me sick! I don't love you anymore! And I'm never going to want you back! I stood there totally mortified. I heard the crowd jeering at me and taking photos. I quickly ran away with tears streaming down my face. I angrily dialed back the phone number that had sent me the message, but it was blocked. This must have been someone's idea of a sick joke. A week later, my phone buzzed. What? It was from Logan. I quickly opened the message. Hi, Ellie. Look. I found out that Jolie sent you the message to meet at the yard. My friend let slip to her about the proposal, so she came up with that prank to embarrass you. Your behavior made her feel very insecure, and although it was wrong what she did, you brought it on yourself. Please move on and find happiness, as this isn't you. Your actions have made you ugly, and you've lost yourself. I burst into tears because I knew he was right. I gave up on my passion and applied for a course I had no interest in, and all for this guy that still didn't choose me. Now it was time to give up on Logan and this college. After all, neither were right for me. I might be beautiful, but looks alone don't buy someone's love. There's so much more to it than that. For now, I've moved back home, but I'm going to put my heart and soul into my music, then apply to a music school majoring in composition because I finally realized that it isn't Logan who will make me happy. It's my passion. I stand here before you, looking back fondly on the four years of legacy we've all made together. Do you see her? The girl in the graduation gown giving that awesome speech? Well, that was me. Taylor Flores. Take a look at my parents. They looked so proud of me. Oh, but I will never forget this face. This is Jonas, my arch enemy. We were the top two students in our school and had been competing against each other since forever. But too bad, Jonas. You lost the final battle because I was the one asked to give the graduation speech, not you. It's safe to say that I had it all figured out after high school. First, I would move to New York to attend the most prestigious college in the city, majoring in English, of course. Then, when I graduated from college, I'd write my first novel, then publish it to acclamation and glory. Now, that's what I call a perfect plan. (laughs) Just wait for it. You will see my face on thousands of book covers. Taylor Flores' time has come. I want those pages by the end of Friday, else be prepared for a pay cut this month. Ugh! I hate deadlines! As you can see, my life didn't exactly turn out as I planned. What went wrong, you ask? Well, after I graduated from college, I pursued my writing dream. But every agent and publisher I sent my novel to rejected it. I kept pushing myself to write more, but then I ended up having writer's block. I couldn't create stories anymore, so I decided to switch to writing for newspapers. I used to think that if I had to write for a newspaper, then it'd at least be a famous one. But life is not a fairy tale. On the contrary, it's actually cruel and unfair. Well, at least it was to me, because my preferred newspaper rejected me a bunch of times. So now I ended up here, working for this unknown news website with an all-time grumpy manager. (sighs) 
Okay, so back to what was happening at the office. Suddenly, my phone buzzed through an email. Oh no, it's an invitation to my high school reunion. No way I could go back to my hometown and see everyone. They'd all see what a loser I'd become and I'd be the joke of the party. All the worst case scenarios were running through my mind until a call from Amelia came. It's my bestie from high school. She asked me if I was going and I told her never in a million years. If you don't go, then everybody will assume that you failed in life and you're too ashamed to go. So the best thing you can do is to attend and keep your head up high. Man, Amelia really had a point and was great at persuading other people. No wonder she's now a lawyer. Ugh. So here I was, in front of the venue, feeling so nervous that I thought I may throw up. But it's now or never, right? I just needed to put my game face on. I entered the room to a load of unfamiliar faces. Huh? Was I in the wrong place? I was about to leave when I suddenly bumped into somebody and fell on the floor. Ouch. I looked up. It was a chubby lady who was holding her baby in one arm and gripping a toddler's hand with the other. I instantly apologized. I'm so sorry. I hope I didn't hurt the kids. Oh, it's fine. You're lucky my belly was big enough to block you. <laughs> She then paused and took a closer look at me. Is that you, Taylor? You look great. Let's get inside. The party just started. Wait, she knew me. But who was she? I guess she did look familiar. Maybe I should wait for Amelia and ask her, as she had kept in touch with most of our classmates. I looked around, trying to find someone familiar to have a chat with, but my gosh, why was it so hard? But then I saw a woman who had beautiful, long, blonde hair, and I instantly knew who it was. Jessica, the hottest and most popular girl in high school, and the captain of the cheerleader team. I walked over to her, and we began to catch up. We chatted a lot, and she was so funny. Hmm, I don't remember her being so hilarious. My god, you're so funny, Jess. Hey, Jessica! I heard Amelia shout. I looked over at her, and she was walking towards someone else. It was the chubby lady from earlier. So, she's Jessica? Oh my, she definitely changed a lot. But if that was Jessica, then who was this? Thank God I didn't say her name earlier. I excused myself from this mystery person, then whispered to Amelia, asking who the lady was I was talking to. Pete's me. Why don't we ask her directly? She then did exactly just that. The lady gave us a playful smile, saying, Try guessing. Are you Ashley? Nope. Natasha? Wrong. Tiffany? Negative. Wait, are you related to Jack Miller? You kind of look like him. Almost correct. Oh my, she wasn't related to Jack Miller, because she is Jack Miller. Well, now she's Jill Miller. Turns out she never felt comfortable being a boy, so after high school, she underwent transgender surgery. Wow, that's incredible. I kind of felt overwhelmed, so I went to the bathroom to freshen up. On my way out, I saw a familiar face. It was Luke, the most handsome guy in high school. He was picking up trash and putting it in the garbage can. Aw, what a nice guy. We talked for a bit and... Oh... Turns out he works here as the janitor. He was the one who recommended organizing the reunion here, and he was cleaning up as much as possible so later it wouldn't take him so much time. For real? Who would have expected that? I went back to the party and saw Amelia talking to a guy. Oh, who is this handsome dude? Amelia beckoned me over and introduced him to me. I couldn't believe my ears. It was Jonas, my arch enemy! The chubby dwarf Jonas with a face full of pimples now resembled an Abercrombie and Fitch model. Jonas just told me that he's been promoted to a higher position in his company. Ugh. Seemed like he still kept his bragging habit. Some things never changed. Suddenly, Jonas asked me, What about you, Taylor? How has it been going for you lately? Oh, snap! I couldn't tell him that I was working for this awful news website. That would be so humiliating. So, thinking fast, 
I blurted out that I was a managing editor for this huge newspaper in New York. Jonas and Amelia looked at me in shock. In your face, Jonas. If I had a mic, I would definitely drop it. <laughs> I asked Jonas what position he was promoted to, and he replied, Oh, I, um, got chief technical officer. Huh, nice try, but it was no match for my amazing <laughs> job. I won that battle, loser. Well, in general, the reunion went pretty well, even though I had to lie about myself, but whatever. It's not like I was gonna see Jonas again, right? Wrong. A week later, I received a Facebook friend request from him. First, I ignored it, but then a few days later, he texted me via messenger, asking why I didn't accept him on Facebook. Ugh, that was so annoying. Fine, but first I had to readjust my page. I needed to hide photos, statuses, and tags that were related to my company. Done. Then Jonas began to text me. It was nice seeing you the other day. Would you like dinner sometime? Um, I'm sorry, what? Was he asking me out on a date? Or was this a prank? Because I live in New York. I told him that, and... Oh my god. He lives in New York too. Ugh, great! But the thing is, I told him last time that I'm an editing manager, and that's a busy job. So during our date, I asked Amelia to pretend to be my secretary and call me a bunch of times during dinner. However, before we could play our act, Jonas was the one who received a dozen calls and then had to leave early because of an incident at his company. After that, he texted me quite a lot, but still feeling bitter from being ditched at dinner the other day, I only replied to him after 30 minutes. Every time. But on days when he didn't text me, I found myself staring at my phone, longing to hear from him. Jesus, I was falling for him? Jonas? Why Jonas? I couldn't understand myself anymore and was unable to stop my feelings. So when he told me he liked me, I said I liked him too. And soon we became a couple. It was great at first, but then Jonas insisted that he drive me to work and pick me up. Oh no. I refused, of course, but he wouldn't take no for an answer. Ugh. So when Jonas dropped me at the fake office, I had to run. No, I had to sprint five blocks to my real office to make it on time. And then in the evening, I had to leave 30 minutes earlier to run back to the other office and wait for him to pick me up. The first three times, I could handle it. But Jonas wanted to drive me to work every day. That's enough. I needed a break from all this running. Eventually, I came up with an excuse. I bought a bike and told him that I wanted to ride to work, as it would be good for my health. Poof. I didn't have time to run five blocks each day anymore, because I had an important interview to prepare for. Oh yeah, I was applying to my dream newspaper. Again, if I did get in, I don't need to lie to Jonas anymore. And luckily, my interview went pretty well. I had a smile on my face as I walked over to the elevator. First it was just me, and then a bunch of employees went in. The elevator was about to close, when suddenly, from the outside, someone put his hand between the doors. Please wait! And that's when I saw a familiar face. Jonas! Our eyes met, and we both looked shocked. Then one of the employees said to him, Hey boss, I already finished the report, and we'll send it to you this evening. What? Why did the guy say that to him? When the elevator reached the ground floor, I quickly ran out of it. Jonas ran after me, held my hand, and said, Wait, let me explain. What is there to explain? We both lied to each other. Jonas held me in his arms and tried to keep me calm. Then he began telling me everything. Oh my god. Turns out he's the actual editing manager of this newspaper. Ugh! Well, that explains a lot. I should have known he didn't work in technology, as I once asked him to repair my laptop, and he ended up locking himself out of it. Hearing you say you had my job shocked me. I didn't want to embarrass you, so I made up another position. So he knew right from the beginning I was lying. Then why did you insist on driving me to work, when you already knew I didn't work there? <laughs> I was just messing with you. Besides, 
I was kind of curious to see how long you could keep the lie up for. I'm sorry. But the truth is, I like you. I have liked you since high school. Back then, I was always competing with you because I wanted you to notice me. I thought I was about to throw a tantrum, but thinking back, it was all my fault. If I hadn't lied in the first place, then Jonas wouldn't have had to lie about himself. Right at that moment, I received an email from Human Resources. Oh god, I got in! They were so impressed by me that they had to email me right away. I was so happy that I hugged Jonas as he said, Congratulations, newbie. Now, let's get to work. Your first task is to go out on dinner with me. Yeah, so now Jonas and I work at the same place, and he's my boss. I used to hate losing to him, but now that he's my boyfriend, I feel fine. Actually, I'm really proud of him. <laughs> Susan! Hurry up, or we'll be late to see the House of Gucci! Hang on, where was Susan? I looked around to see my friend standing on the spot. Um, Lola? Isn't that your car? I looked in the direction Susan was pointing and saw my beloved car resting on the back of a tow truck. Great! Our only mode of transport was being impounded for illegal parking! So much for a movie trip! <sighs> well, let's call it a day. My line of thought just ended when, oops, something fell on my shirt. Ah, those stupid birds! Unbelievable! This was my brand new tea, and now it was covered in bird droppings. Oh yeah, welcome to a normal day in the life of Lola the Jinx. Yes, I've been called that since I was a little kid. All of my relatives except for my parents, have always been extra wary of me. Then, when I was 12, during a boring family gathering, I overheard a heated conversation between my uncle and my parents. Stop living in denial. That girl's bad luck. Send her off to boarding school. Anywhere. As long as she's away from this family. You're being ridiculous. It's my daughter you're talking about. The fact that you lost your job has nothing to do with her. She's just a kid. That's right. This isn't Lola's fault. You need to stop blaming her for everything because of some silly words. It turned out that the silly words in question were told by a prophetess on the day of my birth. So, my family owned a famous furniture manufacturing business in the area. But unfortunately, on the day I was born, there was a fire in the workshop and they lost everything. On that same day... A prophetess passed by my house and dropped a sentence that made everyone in the family panic. That newborn is a jinx who will bring misfortune to the entire family. So that's why relatives ignore me, don't invite me to parties, and whisper about me behind my back. I don't want to believe the prophecy, but with all the bad luck I've had so far, it's hard not to. Have you ever carried an umbrella around with you for six days straight? Only for it to be sunny? Then the one day you forget to bring it, it pours down? Or have you ever been able to lick a delicious looking ice cream when you tripped and splashed the whole ice cream on the poor person standing opposite you? Well, not only was I unlucky in my own right, but my ill fortune also affected the people around me. It's no wonder I'm a shy girl who struggles to make friends. Besides my parents, I only have one friend, Susan. Hey, Lola. Have you ever thought about breaking your bad luck? There's a very famous fortune teller in town. Breaking bad luck? Well, that sounds like a good idea. I've had enough of being Lola the Jinx. The next day, following Susan's instructions, I went to a small house on the outskirts of town. As I knocked on the door, I was nervous and excited. I hoped this would finally be the end to my run of bad luck. A woman in veil let me in. I couldn't wait any longer, so I blurted out, Hi, I'm here since I heard you could help me get rid of my bad luck, right? Please help, whatever it takes. The fortune teller sat still for a moment, then a smile lit up through her veil. You're Lola, daughter of the Gonzalez family, right? I was stunned. Whoa, she was good at her job. I mean, 
I hadn't even introduced myself yet. Of course, I already knew that you'd come here. But it would be difficult for me to eliminate your misfortune. There's only one person in the world who can undo your jinx. They will bear all the bad luck for you, and even bring you good luck at the same time. Is that so? But who could that be in this whole wide world? I blurted out. The fortune teller smiled and said that if I wanted further clues, that would cost me a few more bucks. Oh well, I've already come this far, so it's worth spending the rest of my monthly allowance to know who my mystery savior was, right? Then she pulled out this drawstring bag and shook it. She told me to draw an item. Oh, it was a small tile with a single letter on it. A. Well, well, well. Interesting. A person whose name starts with an A. Fear not, Lola. The universe will signal you to find that very person. I then went home and couldn't stop searching my mind for people I know with A names. Um, let's see. The most potential person was... Ariel, a classmate of mine who was super lucky in everything. That's right, no one else but her. She was born wealthy and fortunate. She didn't even study and she always got good grades. Actually, she just won the school raffle. Her prize was a year's supply of donuts and a bowling trip. Obviously, she was the complete opposite of me. With her inherent luck, surely a little bit of my jinx seasoning wouldn't make her too miserable, right? But honestly, I'm not fond of Ariel. She's sour, scornful, and a show-off. Still, dear Lola, anything was possible if you wanted to end your bad luck. So I was determined that from tomorrow, I would make her my best friend. Together we would have the perfect balance between bad luck and good fortune. But easier said than done. Being friends with Ariel meant I had to continuously compliment her on everything. Her new shoes, high grades, choice of lipstick color. Ugh. She also made me go and queue up to get her lunch. Someone like me struggled to carry my own lunch without tripping, let alone two. But the weird thing was, I didn't fall over. Actually, ever since I started hanging out with Ariel, I couldn't recall anything bad happening. With my newfound luck, I started opening up to some of my other classmates. And you won't believe it. An unlucky girl like me even won two tickets to the opening of a new water park. So I decided to share one with Ariel. To be fair, it was her luck that got me those tickets, right? But, uh-oh. Hang on. Was that Ariel tottering out of the changing rooms in her stiletto heels? What an idiot! And right after that, just as you might have guessed, she slipped over. But to my horror... She also frantically grabbed onto my arm to take me down with her. But wait, why didn't I feel any pain? Oh, was I dreaming? Did this handsome guy just save me? As for Princess Ariel, she broke a tiny fingernail, so she just stormed off sulking. Never mind, as I had a new companion, my super cute hero, Anthony. Since then... Anthony and I talk to each other every day, and just like that, we officially became a couple. Honestly, who would have imagined that Lola the Jinx would one day have a very wonderful boyfriend like Anthony? Maybe my luck had finally changed. Yay! So the prophecy was fulfilled. Ariel was the one who brought me luck. Hmm. But actually, thinking about it, Ariel didn't seem to be having any bad luck at all in the meantime. Well, apart from the fingernail incident, but in that instance, she was lucky she didn't sprain her ankle or anything. Hmm, perhaps we were all riding on the good luck train, for once. But there's still one thing I can't understand. Honey, why were you so late today? Sorry, babe. On the way here, I got a flat tire. Twice! Yeah, you see, my boyfriend sure had been having a lot of bad luck lately. But wait... Anthony also has a name that began with the letter A. Could it be that it was Anthony who bore my bad luck? Not Ariel? Oh no, this couldn't be happening. Then, over the next few weeks, my suspicions were confirmed. Anthony lost his phone. He misplaced his assignment. Picked up the wrong dog from the vets. 
and even managed to walk into his mom's brand new, expensive vase. Smash! I could continue to be a jinx, but I didn't want any of my loved ones to endure this fatigue for me. Instead, I needed to find a way to help Anthony get out of this for good. Hmm, maybe he could befriend someone super lucky. Then this would reverse his bad luck. With this plan in mind, I planned a picnic for us both, then invited the luckiest person I knew along too, Ariel. At first, it seemed to be going really well. It wasn't raining, and there weren't ants in our sandwiches. But then I noticed Ariel giggle and twizzle with her hair as she looked at... Anthony! Oh no, Ariel had a crush on my boyfriend! The problem was, the more I saw them together, happy and bad luck free, the more I concluded that Anthony was better off without me. <sighs> so I started ignoring his calls and messages and purposely avoided the places I knew he would be. All was going well, until he showed up outside my school. Ugh! Lola, why are you ignoring me? What did I do wrong? I pretended not to hear anything and kept walking, but he ran after and caught me by my wrist. So I yelled at him, Nothing! You're perfect! That's why I stopped talking to you. I'm a jinx, and you deserve better. He gave me a confused look, so I explained all about how bad luck had a way of following me and the people I was closest to, and that's why I had set up a date for him and Ariel. You're such a fool. Are you seriously ready to throw away what we have because of some stupid prophecy? Plus, I'm not an object for you to just give away to whoever you want. Then he stormed off. This was awful. Now I'd gone and lost my amazing, sweet, caring boyfriend, and I only had myself to blame. Later that night, Mom walked into the living room and saw me slumped on the couch crying. She asked me what was wrong, and I blubbered out all about my bad luck, the fortune teller, and how I lost my boyfriend because of it. I think it's time I visited this fortune teller. It might be the prophetess from the day you were born. I didn't see her back then as I was in the hospital with you. If it really is her, I'm longing to know why she decided to put so much stress on our family with her ludicrous words. The next day, Mom and I went to the fortune teller's place. Mom yanked the veil off her face and stared at her in shock. Turns out they went to school together. And back then... This woman was jealous of my mom's luck, a jealousy she never got past. So she tried to sabotage her by telling those ridiculous prophecies to not only me, but the rest of our family. Thinking about it, throughout my childhood, my relatives treated me like a bad luck charm. So that's how I acted. I alienated myself, acted insecure, and had no confidence. Maybe it was my negative energy that was making me unlucky. Not some dumb prophecy. So what happened next? Well, Mom made sure the whole town found out about what a fraud the fortune teller is. She wrote a public apology to us and paid us compensation. As for me, I decided it was time to make my own luck. So I went round to Anthony's and handed him two tickets for the water park. And I apologized for all my superstitious nonsense. He seemed to appreciate the gesture. And he forgave me. So we're back together. Yay! From now on, it's only positive vibes, happy thoughts, and grasping life's opportunities. The most important thing I've learned is that if you see life as beautiful, it'll always be beautiful to you in return. I closed my eyes and took a deep breath. My God, I was so nervous. You see... This was my first day as an intern in this super big company. On one hand, anxiety wouldn't stop creeping up on me. But on the other hand, I actually couldn't wait to begin working in this fancy professional office. Having my own desk, my own PC, doing all the paperwork. Ah, oh, so exciting! But, well, it didn't exactly turn out as I expected. All I did on my first day was make a lot of coffees get everyone's lunch, and do endless printing. <sighs> oh, I forgot to introduce you to my team. This over here is Quinn, our team leader. And then the girl over there is Sadie. That guy sitting in the corner is Bob. 
and I'm the adorable Lauren. <laughs> then, while I was bringing yet another coffee and cake to each one of them to get to know them better, the manager, Caleb, came to our department and began yelling at Quinn. Why have I still not received the report on the working project? Sorry, boss. We're kind of short-handed. Short-handed, huh? Then how come every time I walk past, I see the intern doing meaningless things? I didn't hire her to wait on you guys. Is that clear? Then Caleb looked at me and said, You, intern, in my office. I followed Caleb into his office, feeling all anxious. Did I do something wrong? Then suddenly, Caleb hugged me from behind. I got so startled that I immediately pushed him away. What are you doing? You can't do that here. <laughs> Sorry. Just seeing you here makes me so happy. But what's with the tense face? Oh, I never saw you yelling at somebody, so it was kind of scary. That? Oh, that's nothing. You're probably wondering why my manager was hugging me. Well, actually, Caleb is my boyfriend. You see, I was in my last semester of college. I told him that I wanted to do an internship because it would be good for me, so he insisted that I do it in his company. At first, I didn't think it was a good idea. I mean, couples that work together don't stay together, right? But he managed to convince me otherwise, so here I am. <laughs> Even so, I didn't want anyone in the office to know about our relationship. Therefore, I didn't let him drive me to work, and having lunch together is also a no-no. Caleb had no comment about this. He probably understood why this was necessary. But then one day, at the end of the meeting with our department, Caleb was about to walk out of the meeting room when he suddenly stopped, turned around, and said in front of all, Oh, by the way, I just want you all to know that Lauren is my girlfriend. Okay, bye. Oh my god, why on earth did he do that? Everybody immediately turned and stared at me with shocked expressions. And me, well, I just wanted to slide down the chair and hide under the table. I stormed into Caleb's office and demanded an explanation. Yesterday, I had lunch with a manager of another department, and he said that he liked you and wanted to ask you out. So, I thought it's best to inform everyone that you're my girlfriend. Am I right? What? Ugh, no! Men and their dumb egos! Ugh! Anyway, I hoped that it wouldn't affect anything. But as I feared, it did. Massively so. The moment everyone found out I was Caleb's girlfriend, they started treating me differently. Every time I walked into the room, they immediately stopped talking and gave me awkward looks. Or after work, they would go out for some drinks but purposely not invite me. <sighs> it sucked being left out like that. And then one day, it got much worse. I arrived at the office extra early, as there was an email I needed to send out before 9. But my PC wouldn't turn on, so I got under the table trying to see if a cable was loose. Right at that moment, Bob and Sadie walked into the office gossiping. Clearly Lauren only got that internship because she's Caleb's girlfriend. And did you see her clothes? All those expensive brands? Well... Having a boyfriend who's the manager in a big company must be blissful. <laughs> what? I never accept expensive gifts from Caleb. They're all mine. Then during work, I accidentally took a glimpse at Quinn's computer screen and saw that they were chatting about me in a group chat. Something about me not having to do errands just because my boyfriend's the manager. <sighs> Hearing and reading all these mean comments made me feel really frustrated so I wasn't in any mood to work that whole morning. Then in the afternoon, we had a meeting about the project we were all working on, and Caleb asked me to hand him the report. Oh, snap. I'd totally forgotten to do it. Um, sorry. I haven't written the report yet. Can I ask why? And what were you doing this entire morning? For the sake of our team, please focus. We can't mess this project up. I'm just having a lot going on, okay? Interns are humans too. Jeez, I'll send you the report by the end of the day, boss. Everybody gave me befuddled looks. Caleb most of all. But wait, I see some of them smiling. Were those smiles for me? Then after the meeting, everyone gathered around me, patted my shoulder, 
and praised me for standing up against Caleb. To be honest, it felt good to be noticed and not ridiculed. So maybe there was still a chance I could win them over, right? The next day at noon, Caleb came by the department to grab some lunch with me. But I told him, in front of everyone, that I wanted to have lunch with the team. He looked confused, but still had to agree. Lunch with the whole team was great. Except for one thing. They constantly kept asking me about Caleb. Like, what's he like outside the office? Why is he always so strict and grumpy? I noticed that they kind of liked talking about Caleb, so I told them, Oh, Caleb is such a great boyfriend. He's very attentive and is an amazing cook. But they weren't interested in that. Oh no, they just cared about his bad habits. Ugh, fine. So I gave them what they wanted. Um, well, I don't like that he's always perfectly on time. I'm one minute late and he begins to lecture me about how time is precious and we shouldn't waste it. That definitely caught everyone's attention right away. They really liked that, huh? <sighs> I felt kind of guilty, but I couldn't deny how nice it was. That feeling when everyone was starting to like me. And it would be only this time, right? Well, how wrong I was. Because every time our team went out, they started gossiping about Caleb and then looked longingly at me until I badmouthed my boyfriend. Again. But to me, Caleb is the perfect man. He just has a few tiny flaws, but nothing major. So I decided to make stuff up. Um, he sleep talks and never brushes his teeth before bed. And, oh, and he burps a lot at home. Ugh, I hated it. But what can I do? The worse stuff I told them about Caleb, the more they seemed to like me. <sighs> then one day, Caleb invited some of the other managers to his apartment for some beer. Suddenly, a guy pointed at Caleb's beer and asked him if he should be drinking that, what with his gas problem. Oh no. Then this guy told a confusing-looking Caleb that everyone in the office was gossiping about him. Luckily for me, he just shrugged and said he didn't want to hear about idle gossip. Phew, that was close. But then something terrible happened. Some of my fake rumors reached Mr. Smith's ears, the general manager. One day I walked past Caleb's office and heard Mr. Smith yelling at him. Something about Caleb resigning as manager because there was a rumor that he pushed other staff who dared to argue with him to quit. Oh no! I only made that up on purpose so the others would be afraid of him and stop talking about him. It's all my fault! So as soon as Mr. Smith walked out of Caleb's room, I ran after him and said, Please wait. I can explain. What do you mean? I took a deep breath to calm down. Then I began to explain to him that I was the one who spread that rumor and that it was 100% not true. Please don't force him to resign. It's all my fault. Oh, sweetie. Why did you do that? I'm sorry, Dad. I was stupid and acted like a child. <sighs> it's okay. But gotta say, I'm disappointed, Lauren. I will talk to Caleb later. Hope you've learned your lesson this time, and don't you ever do that again. Understood? Yes, Dad. Then he walked away. I let out a sigh of relief when, suddenly... Dad? Are you calling Mr. Smith Dad? Oh, no. I didn't notice that Caleb was standing behind us. Well, the truth was finally out. As you can see, Mr. Smith, the general manager of the company, is my dad. But nobody, not even Caleb, knew that. Then Caleb continued. Why didn't you tell me that Mr. Smith is your father? And why did you spread that awful rumor about me, Lauren? Why did you do that to me? Do I look like a fool to you? He got so mad that he was about to walk off. I quickly held his hand and began to explain. I didn't tell you Mr. Smith's my dad because... I was afraid you'd feel pressured and wouldn't want to be with me anymore. Caleb didn't say anything, he just stood there silent. So I continued. About the rumor, I'm so sorry. I messed up, but please, you need to understand. From the moment everyone knew I was your girlfriend, they started gossiping about me and leaving me out. I felt so hurt and lonely when all I wanted to do was fit in. 
until this one time, everyone talked to me again as I unintentionally complained about you, and they treated me like a friend after that. But they're always hungry for more gossip about you, so I had to make some up, and I eventually lost control. I'm so sorry, Caleb. Caleb let out a sigh, then hugged me. I'm sorry that happened to you in the office. I didn't know you were struggling. Next time, you have to tell me. Don't hide things like that, okay? I nodded with a smile and silently thanked my generous boyfriend. Yet I almost ruined his career just to please those talkative co-workers of mine. But fortunately, things turned out well between us in the end. Eventually, people found out that Mr. Smith was my father. Because, well, eyes and ears were everywhere in this company. You can't hide anything. Then they began to gossip that Caleb was only dating me because of the managing position. Man, they'll never stop, will they? But anyway, I don't care anymore. My internship soon ended, and I decided not to come back to this company, obviously. I will find a more suitable environment. But actually, the time as an intern there taught me an important lesson. That you shouldn't care what other people think of you, and just stay out of all that office drama. It's really exhausting. <laughs> I was casually walking along the hallway, just minding my own business, when I felt a cold breeze rush through the hallway. I turned my head to see, and oh, it was Natasha. Ooh. I didn't mean to look her in the eye, but I did. Oh no, was she going to hit me? Panicked, I quickly glared down at my feet. My heart was thudding with fear, and inside my head, I repeated, Please don't hurt me, please don't hurt me. But to my relief, she walked past me. Phew! Hi, I'm Marcus, and you might be wondering why I'm so afraid of that girl, right? Well, there's a reason why her nickname is Silent But Deadly. She's the tallest girl in the school, intimidating, and she never utters a word. The school was full of rumors about her, such as how the last kid who messed with her ended up in intensive care. Nobody, and I mean nobody, should ever look her in the eye, not unless they want to end up unconscious. I definitely just had a lucky escape. Thankfully, not all the girls in my school were as terrifying as Natasha. Nope. Instead, there was this really cute girl named Naomi. She's beautiful, sweet, and gentle. Only, she's also super popular and is dating Nicholas, the captain of the basketball team. So I just kept my feelings to myself and carried on with my life. <sighs> but wait, where's my notebook? I guess I left it back in the science lab. So I rushed in there and... Oh no, Nicholas was there and he was reading my notebook. I quickly grabbed it off of him, but it was too late. He'd already taken pictures of the song lyrics I wrote about my feelings for Naomi. Blast it! So let me get this straight, a nerd like you dares to daydream about Naomi? Uh, but we have a problem here. She's my girlfriend, don't you know that? Uh, wait, it's not like that. I'll stay away from her, I promise. Nicholas gave me this unnerving look. Ugh. No good thing could ever come from a look like that. I braced myself for what he was about to do next. You have to do everything I say, else I'm going to ruin your life. Huh? Was he being serious? Judging by his devious smirk, yep, he was 100% being serious. I want you to ask Natasha out. Make sure you do it in front of the whole class. What? N Natasha? That scary girl? How could I... If you say no, the entire school will know about this. Then he waved his phone in front of me. Ugh, that vile Nicholas. But I couldn't risk my song being sent to everyone. So it looked like I had no choice. So the following day, I walked over to Natasha's desk and asked her, Natasha, um, will you be my girlfriend? The whole class was silent. Then they burst out laughing. She glared at me. Ugh, this wasn't good. I winced, preparing for the death punch. But instead, she led me out into a corner of the hallway. Then she gave me this weak smile, followed by a nod. Oh my god, did she just agree to be my girlfriend? This is crazy. It was completely beyond my expectations. But, whew, at least I was still alive, right? And that's how I ended up dating the scariest girl in school. She never spoke to me, not even a word. So I just helped her with her studies and carried her stuff around. We also exchanged numbers, but we only chatted through messages. Then one day when I was on my way to have lunch with Natasha, 
Nicholas strolled over to me and told me I had to take her to the cinema to catch this awful-looking rom-com, which didn't seem like her thing at all. But what other choice did I have? Nicholas' words were orders. So I asked her over lunch, and to my surprise, Natasha smiled and gave me a big thumbs up as agreement. When I went to pick up Natasha, she was already waiting for me on her porch. She walked over with a notepad. Curious, I asked her why she had it, and she wrote, I won't be able to text you during the movie, so this will have to do. Yep, Natasha has always been different from everyone else, so I didn't ask anymore. During the film, I noticed Natasha was crying. So when it was over and we stopped for lunch, I teased her. I saw you crying during the movie. She slammed her notepad on the table after she wrote, I was not crying. I just laughed and took her home. Hmm, maybe she wasn't as scary as the rumors made her out to be. To be honest, she was also quite cute. <laughs> the more time I spent with Natasha, the more I started to warm to her. There was something I liked about her, even though we had only communicated through sticky notes. I was desperate to hear her voice, so I hatched a plan. When we were in the library on a study date, I picked up an old book and blew the dust in her face. She almost sneezed. But before she did, she placed her hand over her mouth and raced into the girl's bathroom. Then she returned wearing a mask. After that, I tried to make her laugh. I quickly took two pencils from the table and stuffed them into my nose and started making ugly faces. But Natasha just glared at me and handed me a note. If you continue to do these ridiculous things, there will be payback. Ha! Huh, no way was I giving up. So the next day, when I saw her by her locker, I rushed over to her and began imitating the voices of the minions. I thought it would definitely work this time, but no. Instead, she punched me in the arm. Ouch! Yep, I now learned that the rumor about her inhuman strength was not an exaggeration. So I just gave up and our relationship continued. Then one weekend, when I was at Natasha's house to study, I went down to the kitchen to get a drink, just as her mom returned from the grocery store. As I helped her unpack, we started talking. She told me about Natasha's love of collecting glass art, the pieces of which filled the house. Then her mom touched my shoulder and thanked me for making her daughter happy again. Oh man, this was awkward. Now I felt super bad. To divert the convo, I asked if Natasha talked at home, but she just smiled and replied, Natasha's such a quiet kid, right? Then she told me how it's because Natasha's always been taller than the other kids, but she has a squeaky voice. This led to lots of teasing, and once she got so upset, she pushed a boy over and accidentally caused him to have a nosebleed. Since then, people started to shun her, so she withdrew from herself and stayed silent. Hearing this made me feel so guilty. What I was doing was wrong, and Natasha didn't deserve this. Then her mom said something that truly shocked me. In middle school, this one girl named Naomi was horrible to all. The mean comments got so bad she refused to go into school for weeks at a time. Huh? Naomi? The same Naomi I know? No way! Confused, I told Natasha's mom I needed to leave and left her looking bewildered as I ran out of there. My mind was a mess. I had a crush on a mean girl. And I'm just as bad, if not worse, after what I did to Natasha. Then my phone rang with a text from Natasha. It said, Sorry if my mom said something she shouldn't have. You okay? I texted back, We need to talk tomorrow, please. So we decided to meet at her house the next day. Alone in her living room, I told her everything, including my notebook, liking Naomi and how Nicholas was blackmailing me. Natasha, please, you have to believe me. I'm sorry I did this to you. I saw the hurt look in her eyes. Then she threw a note at me and ran to her room. The note told me to get out, but before I did, I stood on the other side of her door. I don't expect you to forgive me, but I couldn't continue our relationship on a lie. Look, I like you, and I don't want to deceive you anymore. After that, I left, and I also texted Nicholas that I didn't care if he told everyone. I'm done being his puppet. The next day, I expected school to be intolerable, but to my surprise, nothing happened. Instead, I saw that Natasha was trying to sort out her locker. A crowd had gathered around her, and Naomi was taunting her. How does it feel to know that even your boyfriend likes me more? <laughs> he doesn't like you. Natasha carried on sorting out her books, but I could see that she was fighting back tears. Furious, I pushed past them all and told Naomi to stop. She just jokingly said, You know, if you wanted to date me, you could have just asked. You didn't have to spend so many months suffering with this giant scarecrow. You're right. I did like you back when I thought you were a nice person. 
But now I know the true you. You're a coward who only feels good when it's at the expense of someone's misery. And I can see why you target Natasha the most, because she has two things you'll never have. A true, kind heart and a loving spirit. After that, I pulled Natasha away and told her how sorry I am. But she didn't even glance at me and just walked off. A few days later, after PE class, I was about to go to the locker room when a classmate, Dante, came up to me. Marcus, help me carry the PE equipment into the storage room, please. I have a stomachache. He hugged his stomach, then hurriedly ran away. Without thinking much, I packed up the equipment and carried it into the storage room. As soon as I put it down, I realized that Nicholas, Naomi, and some guys from the basketball team were waiting there for me. Oh, well, Marcus, do you really like that weird Natasha? Didn't see that coming. Then the whole group burst into laughter. You have no right to say that to her. Take a look at yourself. Whoa, are you defending her? Then she turned to Nicholas. Babe, show him who's the boss here. Then she pulled out her phone and started recording. Nicholas smirked, then grabbed my shirt collar with one hand and reached out his fist to me with the other. I tried to struggle but couldn't get out. He was too strong. Knowing I was doomed, I closed my eyes and awaited his punch, but suddenly a loud shout came out. Stop! I opened my eyes to see Natasha and a teacher standing in front of the door. Turns out she overheard Dante bragging to some kid about Nicholas's plan. So she came to my rescue. I looked at her gratefully, but she turned away to avoid my gaze. Meanwhile, Nicholas hastily released my collar and lied to the teacher that we were just chatting. But of course, he didn't believe him and summoned them all to the supervisor's room. After that incident, Nicholas, Naomi, and the rest of the basketball team were suspended from school for two weeks. They deserved it. But who cares? I have more important things on my mind such as winning back Natasha. I knew that her birthday was coming up, and I remembered how she loved glass art. So I bought her a glass art figure of Cinderella's glass slippers with a ticket to senior prom and a card saying, Thank you, and happy birthday. I know what you did doesn't mean you forgive me, but I want to be your real boyfriend. So I left you a ticket for senior prom. If you come and dance with me, then I know you'll give me another chance. If not, then I know that it's over. But remember, you are a special person and deserved the best. The night of prom came, and I was stuck there all alone, feeling like a fool. This sucked, but after what I did, it was what I deserved. I didn't want to stick around here without her. So I was about to leave, but then my classmate tapped my shoulder and gestured for me to turn around. OMG. It was Natasha in the most beautiful crimson red dress. She walked over to me and then reached out her hand to ask me to dance. And of course, I accepted. As the song came to an end, she leaned in and whispered to me, Thank you, my hero. I can safely say that was the happiest night of my life, as it led to me having the best girlfriend ever. Oh, also her voice is actually really cute, although she does get annoyed with me when I tell her that. (laughs) Oh, we couldn't make a tiny single profit this month again. Business is so slow these days. Oh no, it's already past five? Gotta go pick up Lucy. I rushed over to Elena's house. She's my best friend. She often helps take care of my daughter Lucy so I can work extra hours. No matter how tough things were going for me, at least I still have Lucy. Even on the worst days, one look at her angelic smile, and I realize things aren't so bad after all. Why the long face? Has this month been as hard as last month? I nodded, sadly, and entered the house. It's been even worse. I just want to earn enough money to provide a nice life for Lucy, but I'm barely breaking even. I looked over at Lucy, who was playing with her dollies on the living room floor. I plopped down on the sofa while Elena brought me a cup of tea. Things will get better. I just know it. How about I read your tarot cards to see if things will improve for you? Yeah, right. Let's just assume those fortune-telling things are right. I'm not into the spiritual stuff, but Elena swears by it. I suppose it can't hurt to hear what she has to say, right? She made me shuffle the cards, then laid some out on the coffee table in front of me. Oh, that's interesting. Hey, Nora, seems like your life's going to change sooner than you think. Destiny is telling me that it'll be tomorrow after work. At the bakery close to your shop, it looks like you'll meet a man. A rich one. I stare down at the cards. How on earth was she getting all this information from them? Yeah, yeah, whatever. Thanks for looking after Lucy, but I better take her home and make her dinner. Who would believe those fortune-telling tricks? But, come to think of it, I'm also desperate. 
With all the lockdowns and Brexit, my little candle shop in the south of England wasn't going so well of late. No amount of two-for-one offers or sales events were helping. Ugh. I'm down to single digits on the money my parents lent me to open up the shop. Then there's Lucy to think of. In her three years of life, she has already been through so much, including her father abandoning us both. I want to provide an amazing life for her, not cause us both to end up homeless. Ugh. I may as well do as Elena said. I mean, it's not like I had anything to lose. So the next day, I closed up the shop early, then with Lucy in tow, walked toward the bakery. Hmm, there didn't seem to be anyone about. Looks like Elena was oh so wrong. Oh, miss, I'm so sorry. I brushed bits of pastry off me and glared at this man. Okay, so it looked like he's only a few years older than me, but why is he wearing such old-fashioned clothes? And what's with his awful hairstyle? This has to be the man Elena was talking about, right? But he's so not my type. But I suppose if dating him changes everything, then... Oh, I'm cute kid. He pointed at Lucy, who was cuddling her favorite doll. Yeah, this is my daughter Lucy. Sometimes I swear she loves that doll more than me. She won't let it out of her sight. He chuckled, then nervously scratched his head and said, You're a good mother, I can tell. Um, are you going this way? He pointed up the street. I nodded, then started walking alongside him. Okay, so he's called Dylan. He's an engineer and he's just moved here for work. We exchanged numbers and you know what? We've been texting quite a lot. Soon we started hanging out and he's not so bad, albeit a little on the boring side. Lucy seems to adore him though. He pulls silly faces to make her laugh and buys her sweets. He even took us both to the zoo. Oh, MG, it was so good. And Lucy loved seeing the penguins. So when he told me he liked me and asked me out on a date, I said yes. Okay, so he's not my usual type, but he's rich, caring, and good with Lucy. Besides, it's all too much to be a coincidence, right? Elena's tarot reading must have come true, and he's the guy who's going to change my luck. Hey, all the romantic dates out to the restaurants and places were kind of fun, and even better, business was improving. This was great and all, but dating Dylan was getting kind of tiring. I like the guy. He's sweet and kind, but I don't have feelings for him. One time after a delicious meal, he walked me home. Then on my doorstep, he gushed out about how much he liked me, then leaned in for a kiss. Panicked, I darted out of the way, causing him to trip over and almost fall into a bush. Another time, he took my hand when we were walking through the park. I then just stood there while he gave me this soppy look and said, Nora, I really like you, and I know you like me too because you're not letting go of my hand. It made me feel so awkward, so I just pretended I had something in my eye, then changed the subject. Good luck, charm or not, I couldn't carry on like this anymore. So when Dylan surprised me at my shop with a bouquet of flowers which caused a bunch of wasps to swarm around me, I screamed at him, Please? I'm trying to work. Will you just leave me alone? Dylan looked hurt. Then he left. I felt really bad about it, but I just felt so suffocated by him. After that, Dylan and I stopped seeing each other, but as expected, my business started to go downhill again. Ugh, why? Why does it have to be him that makes everything work? But if it's really only Dylan who can help me make money, then maybe, well, then I'd continue dating him until the end of this winter. I mean, I did need money to provide for Lucy. As a peace offering, I decided to buy Dylan his favorite pastry from the bakery and surprise him with it. But as I was walking out of the bakery, I walked straight into someone. Dylan? Turns out he was also planning on surprising me, and he was just getting a pastry for Dutch courage. I invited him into my shop, and he handed me this gross gemstone bracelet. But I forced a smile, told him it was beautiful, and hugged him. Looks like we're back on. That night, I went home and placed the bracelet on the side. But then Lucy got a hold of it, and I noticed one of the gemstones on it was missing. So terrified she'd swallowed it, I spent all evening in A&E. Ugh, &E. oh, turns out it was a false alarm. Ugh, oh, nice gift, Dylan. For the sake of my business, I may have had to date Dylan, but that didn't mean I couldn't see other guys too. So I joined this dating app and started talking to this cute guy called Austin. We gelled so well. So when he asked me out, I said yes. It was a harmless meetup. This wasn't cheating, right? Austin showed up and, well, I didn't want to compare, but Dylan was like a desert, while Austin was definitely the green oasis. But right when Austin and I stepped out of the cafe, we ran into Dylan on the sidewalk. 
with another girl. So turns out we both wanted to find someone new? If so, maybe there was no need to wait until winter. So Dylan insisted on coming round, and naturally he wanted to know who Austin was. I mentioned how we were both seeing other people, so it was fine. But turns out the girl I saw with him was just a friend. It was time I was honest with him. So I told him how he was a good luck charm for my business, and that's why I continued to date him. He clutched his chest and gave me this heartbroken look. Then he just nodded and left. I felt really bad about it, but at least it was over now, right? I went back to raising Lucy the best I could, trying to salvage my failing business and dating Austin, but in the end it didn't work out with him. The weird thing is I found myself thinking about Dylan all the time. Just the cheesy things he said, and his quirky ways. I couldn't help but think that if he was here now, life would be so much better. OMG, the realization hit me. I actually have feelings for Dylan. I tried texting and calling him, but he didn't answer. I suppose I couldn't blame him. So I went round to Elena's and confided in her. That's when she took my hands in hers and told me the shocking truth. Dylan is actually my cousin. He, he really has just moved to this town, and he is an engineer. But I, I made the fortune thing up. Actually, Dylan once saw you come over to pick up Lucy and liked you. So I decided to do some matchmaking. What? So all this time, it had all been a lie? My business didn't improve because of Dylan. It had just been a fluke? I was kind of mad with Elena, but I asked her for a favor. I'm so nervous. I got Elena to set this meeting up with Dylan. He thinks he's meeting her, not me. Oh, there he is. Oh, it's you. Dylan, I know I was horrible to you, and I'm sorry. Elena told me everything, and I don't care if my business could be better or worse, even though we both tricked each other. I know that I like you, and I just want you by my side. He gave me this questioning look. Then, seeing that I was being serious, he hugged me. So what now? Well... Dylan and I are back together. He's so great with Lucy. And guess what? My business is magically doing amazing again. Hmm. Turns out it has nothing to do with magic or good luck charms or anything to do with Dylan, who not only recommended my little candle shop to all of his friends and clients, but also started up an awesome online marketing campaign for me. Sometimes happiness is right under our noses, but we still try to find it somewhere else. So my advice to you is, is to learn how to be happy with the things you already have, as, trust me, it's only when you lose them that you realize how amazing they were in the first place. Yeah, here's another load of bills to add to the pile. Oh, hey, I'm Zoe, a recent graduate turned office worker with a lousy wage. I could barely afford to pay for food and rent, let alone think about my college debt. It wouldn't matter so much if it was just me, as I could live off of noodle soup. But I also had Birdie to think about, my little sister. Oh, she's back from school. Zoe, I found Daddy today! Huh? I looked at her with a wry smile. Actually, this was nothing new. You see, our parents died when Birdie was just a toddler, so now she longed to have parents just like her friends did. She often said to me, Zoe, you're like my mommy, but Clara and Polly have daddies too, and I want one. She was so innocent that whenever she saw a friendly-looking man on the street, she'd ask me, Is that my daddy? (laughs) Come on, come here. How was school today? Daddy is very handsome, and he lives in a big house. Come on, I'll take you to him. Oh, my lord. This wasn't a house. It was a mansion. Confused, I was about to question Birdie on this, but she started ringing the bell repeatedly. Before I could stop her, someone who appeared to be the butler came out and happily let us inside without questioning anything. That's odd. I sipped on my iced tea and peered around at the grandness of the place, absorbing the rich energy, when suddenly, a very dashing guy walked over. There he is! That's Daddy! Huh? This was so confusing and seeing her hug a stranger was super embarrassing. I had a talk with the guy to figure out what happened, and apparently he's called Harry, and he's 22 like me. Huh? That's crazy, as he looks and acts way older. As for the dad story, 
It turns out, as Bertie was waiting for the school bus, she saw a woman drop her purse. So she rushed over and picked it up and was about to return it. But the woman turned around, saw Bertie holding it, and accused her of being a thief. Just in time, Harry appeared and claimed to be her father to settle the matter. Then he took her to the mansion and showed her around. So that's what happened. Ugh, my sister. Bertie has told me everything. She's such a precious child. I'd happily adopt her. No way! Why not? You like being here, don't you, Bertie? Zoe, I really like it here. I can play with Oreo as much as I want. And now, I have a daddy just like Clara and Polly do. But I can't just leave her alone. Of course not. You can stay with Bertie. <laughs> what? How come such a good person suddenly fell from the sky? Skeptical, I told Harry I needed more time to think. He smiled and handed me his business card and told me to call him any time. What is this? Harry Atkins, the eldest son of the chairman of ATLAC Corp? Unbelievable! His name was all over the internet as a rich and educated young man. If that was the case, then surely this had to be legit, right? <sighs> I can't afford to pay these. My sister and I deserve better than this life. Besides, it would be nice to have a place to stay for free, right? So the next day, I went to see Harry and offered to help with the housework as payment. Harry agreed and presented a prepared contract. Contract? Okay, but there was a clause in it that required me not to mention that I was Bertie's sister. Hmm, this was a little odd, but never mind, it didn't matter. Here was to our new luxurious life. Wait, but does that mean I also have to call him dad? <laughs> so, yeah, my new life began. And oh boy, it was crazy. A maid brought me breakfast in bed and did all my laundry. So much for helping out with household chores. There are actually more servants in this house than the number of staff in my office. So it's obvious that there's nothing left for me to do. Even so, I wanted to be useful, because hearing them calling me miss made me feel quite embarrassed. However, oops, turns out I suck at house chores. Once I put Harry's fine suit in the washing machine and ended up ruining it, which made him pace up and down the room in anger. Also, he couldn't seem to say anything nice about me, always complaining about the flowers I bought or saying the muffins I spent hours baking were too chewy. He threw away all of my handmade stuff because he thought it was garbage. What a rude man. Oh, wait, he's not even a man. He's just a stubborn kid who doesn't care about other people's feelings. I tell ya, if it weren't for Bertie and that contract, I'd... Poof! But those are just small gripes. In general, our life here was great. Bertie is very happy, and seeing her living her best life makes me smile. But unbeknown to me, turns out this was the calm before the hurricane. Hurricane Rachel! Harry's betrothed fiancé since childhood, she's from a rich family and is therefore deemed a suitable marriage alliance to Harry's family. I overheard the servants in the house saying that Harry is the successor to the company. So when he marries Rachel, the company will be even more flourishing. As soon as she saw me, Rachel kept asking Harry, Hey, who is this? Why is she here? And this girl too. Why is there a kid in the house? Who is this scary lady? Hearing that, Rachel looked at me from head to toe and then started firing questions at me. Why are you here? How do you know Harry? When are you leaving? Enough! What a relief. Harry intervened just in time, then dragged her into the reading room. Rachel followed Harry, but didn't forget to wrap her arms around his neck as she peered at me with a smug look on her face. Huh? What does she mean by that? Ugh. Is she... jealous? If that's the case, then she's wasting her time. Because it is true that I have a crush on someone, but it's not Harry. You see, the other week I was wandering home from the grocery store when I met the love of my life. My shopping bag split and my soda, cookies, and potato chips tumbled out. I was trying to pick everything up without getting run over, when suddenly a guy appeared and helped me. Then he drove me home. His name's Marcus, and he's so hot. After that, we exchanged numbers, and have been texting ever since. 
Marcus is so easy to talk to, so I confided in him about everything, from Bertie being adopted to the fact that I'm now working as a housekeeper. He's so sweet and kind, and I feel like I can tell him anything. He's the prince of my dreams. Anyway, my strange life in the mansion continued. One thing's for sure, Harry was great with Bertie. For her birthday, he surprised her with a trip to the amusement park. I have to admit, we had a lot of fun together. Bertie made us go on the carousel five times. Then we got ice cream. Suddenly, I noticed Harry giving me this odd look. What? You have some ice cream on your lips. Here. He leaned forward and gently dabbed it away with a napkin. Just then, a crowd rushed in, and Harry reached out and pulled me and Bertie closer to him. Our eyes met, and... Huh? Why did I have goosebumps and a pounding heart? What did that mean? Did he do that intentionally or not? Why did I have this strange feeling? While I was still sinking deep in my thoughts, Harry stopped the car and said he needed to pass by his brother's place for some files. Huh? Isn't that... Marcus? Marcus? I blurted out. You two know each other? I didn't answer. Instead, I turned my attention to Bertie. When we got home, I kept wondering why Marcus never told me who he was. I texted him to ask, and he replied that they don't get along, so he didn't want me to know. Hmm. Despite all that, I stayed up all night thinking about Marcus. And, and, um, also Harry. It's safe to say I was confused about everything. Then, Marcus and Rachel suddenly showed up at Harry's house one day with a load of groceries. Rachel announced that she was baking a cake, as it's soon going to be her birthday, and we should all assist. Okay, weird, but whatever. I was preparing the mixture when Marcus took my stirring hand and insisted on helping me. Suddenly, Harry burst in between us. Upon seeing this, Rachel yanked on his arm and pulled him away. My eyes widened in horror as I saw the mixture fly into the air and slow-mo splatter all over us. We stood there covered in cake mixture as we all exchanged dirty looks. Um, okay, so after that little display, I think it's clear to say that Harry has feelings for me. Later on, when Marcus and Rachel had left and I was freshly showered, Harry knocked on my door and smiling at me said, Zoe, there's a family dinner tomorrow where you'll get to meet my parents. Don't worry, you won't have to say anything. As a way of saying thanks, I'll pay off your college debts. Okay, so that was weird, but at this point, I'd learned not to question it anymore. Besides, it would be so nice to be debt-free, and it was just dinner, right? I want to break off the engagement with Rachel. This is my girlfriend, and we already have a kid together. Wh what? I almost blurted out, but Harry squeezed my hand to stop me from saying anything, so I sat there with a dumbfounded look on my face. Right at that moment, Marcus and Rachel burst in. Stop the act! Mom, Dad, this isn't his girlfriend, and that little girl is actually her sister. She's just some poor maid. Yes, that's right. I've known all along. I'm the one who told Marcus to pretend to like you to get proof. Wh what is all this? Mom, Dad, I don't think a liar like him should be the heir of your company. I hope you rethink your decision. I didn't understand. What's going on here? Girlfriend? My child who? The heir of what? I just knew one thing only. That I was fooled by both my crush and Harry. I felt like such an idiot. So I quickly grabbed Bertie, packed up all my stuff then ran out of that mansion immediately. Poor innocent Bertie seemed so confused. She kept asking where her daddy was and why she couldn't stay with him. I took what was left of our savings to rent a small apartment for both of us. Life went back to normal. Final demand letters and all. This was our reality. I knew that now. The last two months were like a dream. It was time to wake up. But still... I felt a pang of sadness whenever I thought about how Harry had fooled me. I was snooping around online and saw an article about how Marcus had taken over the company, only to end up bankrupt due to his poor decision-making. As for Harry, well, 
he'd founded his own startup, and it seemed to be doing pretty well. But then, one sunny day, I was on my way to pick up Bertie from school when a familiar person walked alongside me. Hey, it's a nice day, isn't it? Harry? What do you want? Look, I admit that at first, I was just using you to get out of my engagement with Rachel. But then, I... I... I want you and Bertie in my life. I love you, Zoe. Please come home with me.